Good day grade 11. Welcome to lesson 2 in week 8. We're still talking about atomic combinations and molecular structure. In this lesson we're going to talk about how atoms bond. And the easiest atoms to look at when it comes to bonding are hydrogen atoms because they're made up of one proton and one electron. So let's look at them. So there are three types of forces between hydrogen atoms and in fact there are three types of forces between any atoms but like I said we're going to talk about the hydrogen atoms. So if you look at this diagram you will see that we've got two hydrogen atoms here. We've got this one on this side and we've got this one on this side and you can see that you've got a positive nucleus and then you've got the orbital which has got a negative electron on each side. One. So the first type of force that occurs between the hydrogen atoms is actually a repulsive force and that is between the electrons in the atom. So in other words, the electron in this orbital will repel the electron in this orbital. So that's one type of force between your hydrogen atoms. The second type of force is um, the force of attraction between the electron in this side and the positive nucleus of that atom and obviously similarly this electron is going to be attracted to that proton and vice versa. So that is an attractive force between the nucleus of one atom and the electrons of the other. And then the third force we get is again repulsive but this is between the nucleus of this atom and the nucleus of that atom which makes sense because this is positively charged and this is positively charged so you've got a repulsive force between the positively charged nuclei. And these three forces actually play a part in how these atoms bond. So let's look at a graph which shows the energy changes during hydrogen bonding. Okay. So what you need to understand is what's going on here. So at this point here, the distance, this is a graph of the distance between the nuclei, the atomic nuclei. And this year, the atoms are very far apart. And as we get closer and closer and closer to the origin, the atoms get closer and closer to each other. Okay, so at this point in time, the atoms are very far apart. Okay. And what happens is, through gravity and everything else, they start moving slightly closer towards each other. Yeah, there is a force of attraction that is occurring. There's a force of attraction. Yeah, we've got the proton in the middle of the atom is being attracted to the electron and vice versa. Okay, like we said, there's an attractive force. So what happens is these atoms are being attracted to each other. They move closer and closer and closer and closer to each other. And at this point here, there is a very fo a strong force of attraction. But what is also happening are there are some repulsive forces, okay? But the atom doesn't know any better. This molecule doesn't know any better. And it keeps getting closer. So at this point here, okay, the two atoms are almost on top of each other. And at this point here, we've got the repulsive forces that are really coming into existence. Okay, they're really very strong at this point and the, basically the proton in this atom is repelling the proton in that atom and the electrons from this atom are repelling the electrons from this atom. So what happens is this goes back down the atom actually what actually happens is okay let me try and draw a bit better so you've got the atom here and the atom here and they're being attracted towards each other okay that's at this point here right then they keep coming closer and closer towards each other and they start overlapping as we know atoms do and the positive and the positive and they're still being attracted okay life is good that's kind of where x is right then they don't know any better so they keep going closer towards each other so now at this point they are basically almost totally overlapped and i'm sorry my one atom's bigger than the other let me just erase that and make it better Let's try again. Okay, so at this point here, they're actually almost totally overlapping, right? Almost totally overlapping. So this proton nucleus and this proton nucleus are so close together they're repelling each other. And on top of it, the electron clouds are almost on top of each other, so they're repelling. So there's so much repulsion happening here. So the atoms then start backing away from each other again. And they start backing away, backing away until they get to point X and at point X the forces of attraction 
forces of attraction balance out, they equal the force of repulsion, forces of repulsion. Okay, and that means that is the point where the two atoms can ideally rotate around each other, but they basically move around each other, and this is at the lowest energy point. So this point here, this is the lowest energy, and remember what I said to you, atoms bond, okay, to do two things. One is to complete the outer electron shell, which they've now done, and secondly, because atoms want to be at the lowest energy level they can possibly be. Okay, so that there is the lowest energy level there. And we'll talk a bit more about that, but this year, okay, so that's the energy level, the lowest energy level there, okay, is measure. And this distance, so that there, from there to there, is going to be the bond length and we'll talk a bit more about that later again. So that is the distance between the two nuclei. Okay, that's the distance between the two nuclei and that is at the lowest energy point. Right, so that's pretty easy to understand. Now let's look at helium because we know that helium is special. Helium has got full valence electrons. Okay, it's got two valence electrons, it doesn't need any more. It's got a full outer shell, it doesn't need to bond. And look at the difference in the graph. Let me just go back. Do you see this graph goes all the way down, wee, and then goes up, and then obviously the atoms come back down, and they settle over here, right? Okay, whereas this one, it basically stays straight, and then goes, whoops, and then goes up. Okay, let me explain this to you. So each helium has a filled outer energy level, so it really doesn't need anything. So it doesn't get attracted, it doesn't do anything, okay? Then what happens is the energy minimum for the two helium atoms is very close to zero. This here is so close to zero that it actually doesn't even bother to come close to it. So what it does is because it's so low, it allows the atoms to come together, come close together, but they move apart easy and they never stick together. Okay, look at that big dip. In the previous one, look how big this is. Okay, where is my arrow? Look how big this is compared to that little gap there. Okay, so the helium atoms do move closer together, but seriously, that amount of energy that they would gain by being close together, it's just not worth it. So they don't stick together. Right, grade. 11th, what is important about this lesson? What's important about this lesson is you need to be able to explain this, specifically this graph. You need to explain how come the atoms come closer together, what are the forces of attraction, what happens over here, what happens, what are the forces of repulsion here, and the fact that this is at the lowest energy level when the forces of attraction equal the force of repulsion, so they balance out, and that this is the bond length, and this is the energy okay the energy and that's actually the energy is going to take to break that bond but we'll talk a bit about that in the next lesson as well please make sure you understand this and then do the questions in the assessment have a great day